Okay, today we're gonna go through all four clans in Phantom Dragon Aeon. I'm gonna give you a deck for each clan. And this will just be a quick one. I'll just go through it really quickly. I'll talk just some stuff about it. It's just so if you're buying cards ASAPly or you're going to a shop and you need to build a list, you can quickly build one and figure it out later. Because we'll, we'll, we'll go through a more comprehensive look at each of the clans later with, with like a better explanation of each card used. This is going to be quick. This is going to be quick for you. So time attack. Okay, so we're going to start off with Loire, the big daddy of the deck. Pretty much the, the top tier top tier deck of the entire set. A uh, good thing about Luwad is I don't have to build a list for Luwad. Everyone's already built a list for, for Luwad and it's pretty much down to perfection. So let's quickly go through each card. Um, so we run for grade threes, four drag heart, four drag driver. You can run only three drag driver if you want to cut for some space. The pure builds mostly run four Leofalls and four Morphesses. I know Malaysian builds like to run the some Mahas as well for early game aggression, but I don't think you really need it. Uh, we have three Luels for grade one. You can bump this up to four if you really want to. Uh, four Abyssal Owls. One Deck Crimps is what it's called in English. Uh, this gives your grade one's intercept, so you at least need one of it, but you don't really need more than one. And you can just always search it out and then always put it back into your deck to search out just to get it out every single turn. Uh, four Branwins, so you misride less. Two Charon. Two Abyss Rooter and one Nightmare Painter. So this Abyss Rooter basically allows you to get multi-attacks. The other choice is Apocalypse Bat. Uh, they both have their own advantages and disadvantages. Apocalypse Bat, if you run two of it, basically if one of them goes to damage, your entire engine is crap. You also need Nightmare Painters to put the Apocalypse Bat unless you rode the Apocalypse Bat. Uh, that hardly happens. So if your Painter goes to damage, then you're screwed as well. So then you might need to find more space for Painter. You might want to run three Apocalypse Bat that's just taking up more space. Abyss Rooter lets you get five attacks, but the zero that it calls out when placed, like your Morphessa calls out a Rooter, then you call out a zero. The zero doesn't get the crit from Drag Driver. So that's the weakness, but if your opponent's at five, doesn't matter anyway. So if you've been... The, the idea behind the deck is you're f gonna find your opponent at like four damage a lot when you're playing Rooter. The only, get, the only card that doesn't get a crit that's... Are like things that's not grade ones so your drag drive will not get a crit it's gonna hit like a truck uh so they'll probably no guard that if you don't trigger a crit they go to five and then that's when a boost abyss rooter shines and can just pop off but if they stay at four then abyss rooter kind of sucks so both of their own weaknesses and advantages but i think in the end everyone a lot of people went with rooter instead of uh, apocalypse bat okay so moving on we've got gridora all right we run four gridora multi-attacks debilitates your opponents with cradle markers very very nice i uh, run two gun encolios just because the extra add like an extra finish to the deck it has guard restrict you also can press your deck very hard with cradle markers so overall you get to a deck full of triggers and you can trigger more with like a triple drive or a quad drive of gun encolio and yeah you may get a possible guard restrict it's pretty good against especially against decks that do compress a lot as well like luwads other Gridoras. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have four Heldemise. This is the card that basically lets you get four attacks. You never want to draw this card because that means less ways to, well, you let, every time you draw one of these, these are never going back into your deck. So there's less ways to, uh, <laughs> to get more multi-attacks, right? Um, you, it's kind of a weird situation of Gridora. You never want to draw, draw this. So you don't want to draw that many cards but at the same time. You want to draw a lot of cards. So yeah, you just hate yourself. Uh, four Sticky Bolas, great card. First effect lets you possibly search for two Ghidorahs, but unfortunately you don't run like more than one version of Darkface, you only run four Dark Faces, so you probably will never get the two search off unless you're really lucky. Uh, second effect lets you draw, and ideally you can stand it and draw again, uh, and then you can also pump a lot of power for that, you get 6k for each Cradle Markers as well, so great card, um, just don't draw your Heldemise from that. Uh, then we run four of these 12k hitters, these are actually amazingly nice because you play them down early at grade two, you can be really aggressive, and try to close the game out. The longer the longer the game draw draws on, the more chance you have to draw Heldemise, so your deck becomes less good, right? So you can commit these early, they don't even have any defense. They basically search as pseudo grade threes, but they're not. Uh, they're searchable via cradle markers, and then you can just sack them for a Gridora, and then just search out like Heldemise, etc., and not feel too bad. Uh, one Mantis is the flex slot, just in case you want to fix your grade three. And then, uh, yeah, we move on to grade ones, we got our grade three search art. Uh, pretty nice. We got this new card called Moshiruru. <laughs> I can't say it in English, but this basically lets it's like a hard once per turn. You choose a card with a cradle marker and you retire it, and then you call up to one card from your deck with the same grade as that card. And then since that card had a cradle marker, you sort of search a card. So like you basically can fix kind of fix your offensive options, right? No sticky bolus, cradle a grade two, get us get the. Uh, get the sticky bolus out, etc, etc. We run two grade one nulls, just because of Cradle. And then we have two of this Gilded Slug, which is just a nice defensive option. Uh, just 
you get 5k for each rested unit in your opponent's back row, so you can become 25 shield, and it's a grade 1, so it's kind of searchable. Uh, and then you run two of the Butterfly Officer of Counter Charge, and then the 10k, if you give it on something, that restands of Heldemise, you get double the value. And then we're on 12 crit, because we want to be really offensive, really aggressive, and just kind of crit your opponent out of the game, so you don't draw all your Heldemise. Alright, uh, moving on to our next one. Okay, so we've got Tachikaze, uh, this deck kind of builds itself. Because you basically just put on the new cards. All the, this deck has three kinds of cards, right? It's got cards that retire things, cards that want to get retired, and then overall support cards. So we're going to quickly go through it. Um, I don't know any of these dinosaur names, so this is going to be harder to me, but I will do my best. So first we have Guy Emperor, em Emperor Dragon Guy Emperor. So a very creative name. This card retires, uh, gains power. Pretty nice. Uh, then we've got th th Threes, is it Threes or X? No, th through Xeno, all right, sorry about that. Uh, this card retires, Death Rex, it retires, Mega Rex, this card retires, and those are all the retires. Uh, next we've got the cards that want to get retired. We've got these two new cards, it is Regidon, so, and then Blue Sprint, this one as well. So these two cards that want to get retired, they've got a hard once per turn, where if they get retired, they can call the, the, the one of their equip gauges out, and basically makes multi-attacks. So you basically get maximum two extra multi-attacks from Gage because you get a blue sprint and a Regidon. And they also have another effect where they attack and they can pick one of their rear guards and put the top card of the deck under under that card as an equipped Gage. And then, actually there's one more. There's this this old card, uh, Laceratrex. Laceratrex, all right? Uh, this card, you know, when it gets retired, you can Soulbust one in at, at an equipped Gage stand. So it's a nice replacer. And then the rest of the cards are just support cards. So we've got uh, Prison Bird, nice grade 3 searcher. And then this is called Delif Delifo Pyro, right? So interesting effect is when it comes into play, you can count the last one, draw a card, and then call it out into the field. And then we'll call a card from hand onto the field, and then put an equipped Gage under that from the top of your deck. And then when it gets called from the equipped Gage, it gets plus 10k. So Ideally, you want to put this under the cards that want to get retired, and then when it comes out, it gets power. All right, and then the choice is a crit for draw. Um, why? I was thinking about running fronts, but with this deck, you can play really conservatively, conservatively as well, because one card can generate multi attacks, so you don't really need to commit that early until maybe your opponent's at high damage, and then you can start pushing from there. So that's why I went the crits. Lastly, we got Rising Nova. All right, so Rising Nova, new card, new boy. He basically copies two grade threes and gets all their effects, which are pretty nice. He also gets both Force Markers. He gets Force 1 and Force 2. So really, the whole deck is just built around him gaining various abilities, and then the rest of the deck is searching those grade threes, all right? So we're in four, Rising Nova, and then we have our selection, our grade three selection. Uh, we've got Spiking Cyclone. This one gives your Vanguard power, 5k for each Force Marker. And then it has on attack, Candle Blast 1, and Stand. So creates multi-attacks. Next we have is the uh, Dead Beat, a uh, Dead Heat Bull Spike. So as Soul Blast 1, move Force Markers around for when your one of your units attacks, so you can keep on giving, like, cross, cross force, you know, <laughs> on all your, your units. Um, and then it has, an, when attack doesn't hit, it has Force Markers there, you can uh, draw one and retire one of your opponent's units, so pretty cool. And you can combine it with on hits. So Cyfree has a great on hit. Soul Blast 2 on hit stand. So it creates multi attacks. Um, but then it has a nice, kind of nice weird effect where you can counter blast one, suck the regard in, and then search your deck for like the same uh, same unit as that. And then it gets 10k. So interestingly, you can kind of, if they cradle your stuff, you can suck that in. And then they don't get anything from the cradle and you get a standing unit, right? So pretty good. Generate soul. Um, we only run two of Cyfree here. Because I think overall, the amount of chances you have to hit your opponent decreases a lot. So after like maybe one, maximum two turns of Cyfried, uh, he's basically not needed. You start wanting to get your uh, Bull Spike and your uh, Cyclone just on, so you can get multi-attacks like that. Uh, I guess, yeah, that's, that's why we only run two. And then the rest of the deck is just um, searching for your, for your thing, all right? So this one searches for grade threes. This is Rona. <laughs> Not to be confused with uh, another another thing ending in row. <laughs> uh, it's on <laughs> on on uh, on play. You can count last one. Search your deck for a grade three and call it. Cool, it's easy setup. If you have another, if you have a grade three in the same column as this unit, it also gets boost. So ten k boost is nice. Uh, this card also search grade three because it's a grade three search up. And then lastly, you got this this nice little card here. Uh, what's his name? Let me let me let me get his name. It's ambush, ambush Dexter. That's right. So, uh, Vanguard effect, very simple. Just discard a card, draw a card, and then the second effect is counter blast one. Put in a grade two or high card on your regard circle, and then you may search your deck for two cards 
with the same grade as that unit. So this turns one card into two units, and that satisfies Rising Nova's effect pretty well. You can just basically get whatever you want. So overall, it's a very good card. And then the rest of the deck is just support. We run three of this guy uh, from all just because it comes out, serves as an extra booster, and you can uh, draw a card, right? Draw a card. Um, and then lastly, we have this guy. Uh, we run two Assaulting Barvarius. Uh, just because it has nice defensive options, right? You have two, basically it's a flex slot, two slots. You, you want to, you can play anything you want, but this one gets 5k guard for each force marker on my circle. So if you ride two Rising Nova, it get, becomes like a 30k shield. Oh no, it's a plus 20k, so it becomes 25k shield, which is pretty good. We also run Breach Spurt. It's just a great grade two. Uh, when it attacks the Vanguard, you may put a card from your drop zone into the bottom of the deck. So that's why you don't run Wonder Boy any, anymore. You don't need to. This basically just does it. And then for that battle, your opponent must intercept. So they must intercept with everything. And then you can, at the end of the battle, you put this into a soul and draw card. So hand filter basically does everything you want and can trigger some of your effects. You can make really weird like intercepts, forced intercepts. And then also just get the draw and retire off as well from bull spike. So yeah, it's a great card overall. Uh, we run six draw, six crit. We, we get double force, so overall, it's just nice to probably get more hand and then to survive a bit longer. So that's basically all the four decks. Uh, they're not the best decks, I don't think, I think except for Luard, right? Luard, Luard is the best deck. But I think if you really want to, you can definitely find more ways to make them better uh, and be following this up with like a more comprehensive look at each deck. Maybe some decks will change, but I don't think so. We'll just go through all the decks and talk about them and why they're good and why you play them uh, and why you must play Luad. All right, so that's it from me. Let me know in the comments below if this helped you in your quick uh, quick last minute buying decisions or <laughs> last minute uh, build decisions, all right? So yeah, that's it. Uh, I, I think this went too long still. It could be faster, but this is my first time doing a time tech, all right? So I'll see you guys later. Ciao, bye. <laughs>